I want to talk to you again about the power of the words we speak. James, in his letter, speaks of it regarding the tongue. And here he's going to talk about the tongue being something that can light a great and destructive fire. Here we go. James chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, we read this. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And our tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. When James used the idea of the tongue starting a fire, he didn't mean it in a good way. He thought of a destructive, devastating fire, and he thought of how the spoken word has often been used to destroy and devastate. Did you see what James said? See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. You see, the fire of the tongue has been used to burn a lot of people. Children are told, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. But that child's rhyme isn't really true. The bitter pain of a word spoken against us can hurt for a lifetime, long after a broken bone is healed. Just like a big horse can be controlled by a small bit in the mouth, just like a big ship can be controlled by a small rudder, so also an entire forest can be destroyed by a tiny spark of fire. What others say to us and what we say to others can last a long time, both for good and for evil. That casual, sarcastic, or critical remark can inflict a lasting injury on another person. As well, the well-timed encouragement or compliment can inspire someone for the rest of their life. The book of Proverbs speaks of the person who doesn't consider the destructive power of his words. Here's what Proverbs chapter 26, verses 18 and 19 says. It says, Like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. Again, James isn't telling us to never speak or to take a vow of silence. In many ways, that would be easier than exercising true self-control over the tongue. The bridle, the rudder, and the fire can all do tremendous good when they are controlled properly. Yet, James rightly says, the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity. There aren't many sins that don't involve talking in some way. This gives us all the more reason to seek wisdom when it comes to what we say. One great source of wisdom in the Bible is the book of Proverbs, and it has much to tell us about the spoken word. We could say that James echoes the testimony of Proverbs regarding the tongue. Here's Proverbs chapter 10, verses 19 and 21. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Here's Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression but a good word makes it glad. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24 says this, Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Proverbs 18, verse 21 says this, Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You see, God has put a lot of power into the spoken word even the power of death and life, as Proverbs 18.21 tells us. Let me ask you a question. Today, are you using the power of what you say for good or are you using it to tear down? Are you using it to bring life or death? Choose the better course today.